What's up guys, so we're here at NAMM. We're gonna to try to find the top five guitars that are currently here. A lot of the bigger companies aren't here this year. So we're gonna to try to find some of the sleeper guitars, whether they're boutique guitars or smaller companies. I found a lot of the times that the smaller companies are the ones that really make a lot of the good stuff. Obviously like the bigger companies have this down to the science, but there's so many smaller companies that aren't really talked about as much. So you get just as good of a quality instrument as some of the bigger brands. So we're gonna go try to find some, interview some people and talk to and try out some new guitars. Spender. He's an incredible singer, songwriter from YouTube. Actually, we were originally going to try to find somebody from Martin to talk about this, but uh, you know, if you could, I wanted to ask you, what's your favorite, what are some things that you look for in a guitar? Like, out of all these Martins, right? You play Martin. What's your... What's the wait, 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 let, let me see. The acoustics. Yes. For me, it's firstly their legacy and the history, and then also the craftsmanship. And I wasn't really fully, fully aware. Like I knew that they were good quality. Like I knew of Martin. I used to wander into this booth and be completely overwhelmed. And like, oh my goodness, these people know the, the guitars, the, the prices, the, the types of woods, everything about it. I was so intimidated. And then I started playing my OM28 because I fell in love with it, found it in the store, picked up and held the neck. And I was like, oh my God, this is it. It's a small body, which is just perfect for me. And then I went to the factory in October and they took me around the factory. That was probably crazy. What? And if anyone ever is like, oh, Martin Guitars, like, they're so expensive. I'm like, I know why. Yeah, like, it's a lot that goes it's into it. It's a lot. Like, there are, there are so many details that you just don't even think of. And so now, like, they've been very, very supportive of me and my music and my projects. And um, I, I, for life, maybe. For life, yeah. like, I, I'm a, I'm a family member. I mean, you were just playing at the, uh, you were just playing, playing, playing in the market, I so I would assume, yeah, they, they think of you as I their family too. I don't it's think great. I'm gonna go anywhere else now, am I? I'm, I'm, I'm like completely, I'm completely in love with so, their history and everything about it. That's awesome. So you said you played a what? OM28. OM28. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Awesome. I know I played Taylor, but um, within the past like we couple can't of be months, no, no, this is what I'm saying. I've been playing Taylor for a while, and I've been trying to get my hands on a Martin for like the past like two years, a year. It just like comes around to buying it. Well, so you got to find the right one. I'm Taylor of the user group as well. They are. They're they are. But they're, they're just a different thing. They're a different thing. Exactly. It's to your taste. It's like Fender and Gibson. Like with, like you can have both. They exactly. do different things, but you usually lean towards one. Exactly. And I feel like you can tell a guitar player by what they do, which brand they choose. Uh oh. <laughs> you really can. Thank you so much. Thanks I for the question. It. Yeah. Alright. Yeah. 2.5 million plus one. Two and a half million and one. Martin edition. It's a commemorative guitar. The the first one, the two and a half millionth, is in our museum. We travel with this one. This is Brazilian rosewood. The star on top, the oh, yeah. diamonds, represent the sky on the night that C.F. Martin Sr. landed in New York City when the boat came over from, from Germany in 1833. That's the constellation. And the pick card is etched Lower Manhattan, and where that red ruby is, that is where he set up shop in 1833 and stayed there until 1839. That's 196 Hudson Street. That is unbelievable. So that's the two million plus one and one yep. guitar. That is insane. Did they pick this design specifically because it was that number yeah. model? Like yeah. And the interesting thing is, um, it took a long time to get to a million guitars. Like, I can't remember the exact date, 2008, 2010, something like that. But it, from that point, we've already hit two and a half million. From, say it's 2010 to 2023. So it took almost 200 years to, to make two and a half million guitars. Yeah. Wow. But it took a lot more, it took a lot of years to do one million. Because I guess manufacturing process yeah. got better with it, right? Yeah. They were able to develop guitars quicker. So I guess that's right. how it right? 
manufacturer. Wow, that's amazing. So it's not really cool. It's really special. You know what else I noticed too is the custom inlays. Oh yeah. That is like some serious woodwork yeah, right there. Points. And then there's another one. So this is the two million. And this one, all the watch, it's you know, it's the gears and watch making. The one in the museum has a watch actually inlaid in the headstock. When you this these that we made to purchase a, a li very limited number, but when you bought it, you would get a watch from this watchmaker. It's all about you know machinery and gears. So that's what that's all about. This is the watch that when the consumer when it buys it, you can see the price is a hundred. $124,999. This is the watch that the purchasers get, but the one in the museum has the watch inlay in the headstock. And that took a long time to figure that out with the tuners, and it was a process. My next question, is, is it functional? It actually <laughs> is. It at, so is the other one. Holy cow. Well, this is like some serious inlay work. Yes, yeah. that's unbelievable. So there's one guitar too, like a Martin guitar that's more like accessible to, let's say, the public that you would recommend. Like, yeah. The Lux, they are very accessible. They were really great playable neck. The tops are Sitka spruce and it says VTS, which means they've been torrified. Torrefaction is a process where the wood is, the wood is really baked to where it mimics what a 1920s or 1930s instrument sounds like because it breaks down the molecules of the wood. So we're able to copy that, and scope it, and then copy it, and then go through the VTS with a torrefaction process. So in other words, your guitar already sounds open you know how people say, oh, wait till that opens up, it's going to sound really good. Yeah, yeah. It's already open. I'll put a little process so like on the screen, I'll try to show you guys, you know, what it's about, how they do it. Torrefaction. Yeah. This is the torrefied tops. That's what that means. Oh, gotcha. Well, this is super cool. Thank you for showing us That's that. That's in too. a nutshell. Yeah. You know, we could spend hours, but I'm sure there's a big story behind all that. Yeah. Just gave me a little glimpse of it. But I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Hey, you're welcome. Thank you very Thank much. You I appreciate it all the time. Back. about the inlay. Anything else specific? There's a watch up top. Yeah, the watch up top is the one. to get sort of variation in volume of the strings. So you know if you have a fossil bond string on a magnet pickup, uh, your E's and B's will be super loud and your E, A, B will be super low because magnets don't like phosphor, they don't work well. Right, right. So we designed over four years a truly balanced pickup. We charge each pole individually for that string. So if, if you look at it, you can see we bump these ones up. Yeah, dude, listen to this. So you have our three-way acoustic pickup that's only on our guitars. It sounds like an actual guitar. And then you can do this. And then you do this. 
Parts. You know, we have our three-way pickup system here, which is six loaded piezos in the bridge, each designed for that strength. Uh, a face sensor on top, hear that? And then our microphone in there as well. So that's our PG3 pickup, and that is patented to Cole Clark, um, and you can only get it in Cole Clark guitars. So that's why no other companies have a guitar that sounds like this, because they legally can't. Yeah, you know? yeah. My, I guess another question is, I see a sound bowl here. Can you unplug yeah. it? Will it work like an acoustic? Oh, yeah, like, we just did this. This one's a thin line, so it's about the width of a Grinch, really. The, but, you know. It's still, it's still there. But we don't make our guitars in mind of being acoustic guitars. We make them in the idea of being plugged in. Right, yeah. So you can do that. Exactly. A lot of guitars. Playing gigs, you're going to be plugged in. Well, man, exactly. Right? Like, you're not looking for a guitar to be like sitting on your couch and play it at home. There are amazing big body players who do that, and that's the main thing. If you plug that in, you won't sound the same as it does when you play it in the store, play it in the studio, play it at home. You won't sound like that. It sounds like electronics trying to capture your guitar. Yeah. Uh, we just had a way to do that. That's amazing. Yeah, I've got a few for you, but I'm loving this Black Star. They've been kind enough to uh, send one over here for me because uh, I didn't want to bring one on the plane. So uh, that's a completely flat EQ. Well, I, I, there's no tricks, no tricks. This has been in a box for three years between NAMs for us. That's so flat. this is like an IR? That's a powered monitor. Oh, gotcha. That's okay. like, like a, any PA venue. Like, okay, that's just direct. Like so speaker. run and direct. Straight in the back, no reverb, no EQ, no nothing. Okay. Awesome. All right, Thanks, man. guys.
we got a P90 in the neck right over here. It's got a nice fat sound. Going to the middle pickup. Just both of them together. Super bright and clean sound. Then we got this bad boy right here. We got a humbucker in the bridge. It's got a super, super tight tone. Sorry, I'll leave that still for you. The thing is super tight, super twangy. Super nice. So this is the Soul Tool Venus Custom. It's got a lot of really, really cool features that I like. For one, um, Egon, who is the, uh, the luthier of this guitar company, he said down here, he puts brass for his high four strings and this, get, this adds a lot of warmth to the strings themselves because he said a lot of the strings, right, they're very, they're bright to begin with. Um, they got a lot of clarity. So actually putting brass by the bridge kind of warms up the tone a little bit and still maintains that clarity, which is super nice. Over here, he adds titanium for the for the bottom two strings. Mm -hmm. And what this does is essentially the lower strings kind of have a lot of bass and they kind of have like a lot of muddiness to them. Um, muddiness might not be the right word, but a lot of times the low frequencies can get lost and it's hard to, to pick those, you know, the clarity out of those low notes. So what this does is it kind of sharpens it and kind of tightens the tone and gives it a lot of uh, 
punch. So like we said, the titanium down here, it adds a lot of punchiness and a lot of tightness to these bottom strings. You can hear it. Adds a lot of punch, really, really cool with the high strings, that brass. adds a lot of like dynamic so it basically just takes the sharp ends of the notes and then also the muddy ends of this note and of the bottom notes and it just balances it out together so you get a perfectly clear sound no matter where you are so that's that's this humbucker right here the cool thing about this humbucker is it's actually heat treated um so he was mentioning to me that if you were to grab the humbucker, let's say, or a bridge pickup from another guitar, right? He was saying something about if you were to like ding it with a metal spoon or something like that, or whatever it is, it's gonna, the ones on the other guitar are gonna make kind of like a clanky sound. But if you were to, you know, hit this with like some metal tinger or whatever it is, it's going to create a nice like sharp ding sound. It kind of just shows you how tight everything is, right? Heat treating something is different than using any kind of like other adhesive or whatever it is. It's, it's very tight together and, um, when your strings resonate, being able to translate that vibration into your guitar picks is super, uh, into your guitar pickups is very, very important. So that's where you get a lot of that accuracy from. So one of the coolest things uh, about this guitar, I think, is that a lot of times when you get a guitar, you dial the tone back and you lose basically all of the tone in the guitar. It just kind of dials it down to the point where it's almost muddy and unusable. His goal with this is to create a circuit that as you dial back the tone, it's still usable. So I believe he said he has like three or four different, um, I forgot the word for it, but he's got three or four different basically patches um, that the circuit runs through and it just gives it a little bit more clarity every single time. So as you can see, let's say I just hit this chord, as you dial the tone back, it's about 50% right now. As you dial it back even more. So one of the coolest things about this guitar is the tone knob. So the tone knob down here, if you notice whenever you pick up most other guitars, you dial the tone back and you tend to lose a lot of the, the clarity and almost become super muddy to the point where you can't even really use it. So with this guitar, he uses like three or four different, I don't know what they're called, patches, like circuit, circuit, whatever it is, three or four different plugs to run the circuit through in order to get this sort of clarity. No matter how much you dial it back, it's always gonna be super dynamic, or I should say super static, right? It's gonna be just a constant up and down. Like with other tone knobs, once you get down to like two or one, it almost like immediately shuts off and it's hard to get any tone out of it. With this one, as you can see, as you dial the tone back, this is about halfway still has a lot of clarity and let's dial it back to like 25 percent that's about 25 percent so see he's got a lot of clarity this is all the way off So as you can see, it's still got incredible tone, which is huge, especially if you hook it up with distortion pedals or gain pedals, anything. The sustain on that that thing just that thing just rings out. That's unbelievable. That's actually crazy. That's unbelievable. All right, so let's switch this over to the humbucker.
Alright guys, so I'm here with Medina. Cream guitars from Mexico. Mexico. Awesome. So this is super cool. This is a new booth and I've actually never seen this before. So this is your second hand. Yeah, that's right. Awesome. Awesome. So we're good. We found out they're like super unique guitars. Thank you, right? The design is amazing. I've noticed one of them is modeled. Sort of they have to like fix more, but some of these seem very like unique designs, right? Yeah, that's right. So can you tell us a little bit about the guitars? Yeah. These are like a custom shop guitars uh, inside. It's not paint, it's got already parts. It's like in 3D kind of illusion. Wow. And these ones are not for sale. I mean, this was a collection that we kind of display here. So they're special. They, they, they and everything. So those are unique, like display pieces. So yeah, that's it. I mean, it's part of it. So this one is called the Revolver. It's the standard version. You can have the two single coils, one the poker. And the uh, five-way switch. Awesome. And it comes in a wide variety of uh, colors. Also the finish. It's not paint. I mean, there are some parts in it. It's resin, so it's pretty, pretty cool on the stage. You know? What's this guy? What's this guy? Oh, this one is a revolver, which is like a five-way switch. The configuration, it does it with two single coils from the poker. Also got split coil. Nice. So you have a wide variety of tones. And the finish is in every color you want. So it's gonna be a stage eye catcher. Yeah. They come in all different scale lengths and uh, yeah. no, everything is the same. So they find that. Not a bad thing. I love this head this piece and the headstock too. It's got yeah. a little cut out. It's almost like glass. What is that? Like uh, acrylic? Like a box? Yeah. Actually. Very cool. Also, we have in here a bronze plate that joins uh, the full body, you know, like with the screws. So what that does is resonance. You have a more sustain, so the guitar never gets like quiet. So oh, it's pretty cool. So out of all these, which one is your favorite? Like which one's probably the most sought after or your go-to? Uh, the Voltage, which is next to this one. Can we check it out? Yeah, that, let me just uh, hand it here. Yeah. So I love the favorite one from now. Uh, this is called the Voltage, my personal favorite. Uh, here we have two walkers with a split foil. Uh, a poker. However, we have the same thing that's been going on by here. Like the headstock, it's very much the same, but it's a different shape. I guess this one on stage is like eye catcher, definitely. Also, we have a variety of finishes, uh, glitter, all that kind of stuff. So it's pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Nice. Yeah. yeah, so you want to jam on it? Yeah, why not? Let's do it, sure. Dean Gordon guitars, though, you know, for that amount of time, but seriously, for about six or seven years now. It's just my first NAMM show. It's only the third guitar show I've ever done. I believe in like organic growth and really maturing the, the platforms that I make. So, what, uh, in your opinion, what separates, let's say, one of your guitars, or like, obviously, the aesthetic is absolutely gorgeous. But in your eyes, what it, what do you think is like something that separates it from other guitars? So, besides the obvious, you know. The lower aluminum horn, which by the way, it's aircraft grade aluminum. I have a lot of people say, oh, I'll break that off. Oh, I'll bend it. This is thicker aluminum than the airframe of the Airbus A320 that I flew to <laughs> California in. So good luck breaking that off or doing that. The screws mounting it are two inches long. You'll break the guitar before you break the aluminum or even bend it. Anyways, what I think separates them more than most is this. 
got herbs and the carves and all that. Uh, you know, it's it's really difficult to make a modern design that works. So many guys make a quality guitar, but the design just doesn't appeal. I get guys that are traditionalists looking at my work and go, wow, that's amazing. This guitar I sold today, and it's a guy who goes, who said to me, I would never have thought I would ever buy a guitar like that, but seeing it, I have to have it. You see it, you feel it, you see how thin they get, and how pretty they get, and they fit to your body. I mean, look at this thing, it's like a fighter jet. You yeah, know what I mean? It's it's, like it's yeah exactly. It's, like, it's just I really think about every carve and every curve the way say Ferrari does. They take it that seriously. Uh, so and that's really what I think really separates them outside of the aluminum piece, which to me is like that's the big thing that people notice. It's amazing yeah. aesthetically, like this is absolutely gorgeous. I love just even the color separation. I love first off gray, black, and blue is my it's my favorite color combination. Yeah, ever. This, is, this is insane. So. What are you using as far as like hardware and stuff like that? So this one's special. Uh, you know, it's got the Schaller Hannes bridge, which uh, I was just talking to the guys from Schaller. They love my work. And uh, so very high quality bridge, very easy to get your palm on there and do some palm muting or whatever. It's just a very smooth bridge, very high quality piece of hardware, very resonant. Uh, my favorite go-to is the uh, hip shot locking tuners. Uh, I use their little knurled industrial knobs uh, and it's just, they're like fine tuners. It's great quality, they lock. I'm from New York, they're a company in New York, so you know, that's it's just a match made in heaven for me. Uh, when it comes to pickups, I use a variety of different companies. This one has pickups made by a, a maker in Canada named Tim McNelly. Makes a wonderful pickup, but I also work with uh, bare knuckle pickups and Elysian pickups. I mean, I'll use anything in the guitar, but those three brands I just listed are really my go-tos uh, to work with. They do all kinds of custom work for me, and Tim at Bare Knuckle is amazing. Tim McNally at McNally Pickups is amazing, and Adam at Elysian. They love to do, you know, really cool, high-quality stuff. So I'm happy to be engaged with guys that do cool things. Yeah, that's part of the bigger picture, right? It's like having some help people behind you to help put some of this together too exactly. like that's yeah, yeah. and i gotta say like one thing too i absolutely love the fact on the uh fret and lays right here right over here the fret dots i love how everything is just color coordinated yeah perfectly. like so every single thing is this blue stripe down the neck is not stained it's actually a solid blue piece of maple that actually runs through the whole neck it's actually the same maple that they would use in like a skateboard so it's very stable once you glue it in but it's got that nice blue look uh the, even the uh the dot and lay is a uh, it's a blue clay with an aluminum, you know, like edge around it. Uh, you know, and the guitar, the, these pinstripes are hand laid by a master pinstriper in Miami named Moses Diaz. Uh, he does like high end motorcycles and choppers. Uh, and just watching him hand lay that was just incredible. So, this guitar is packed full of details. This one I made uh, inspired by a Rolls Royce. Uh, specifically the 2022 uh, Rolls-Royce Black Badge Ghost. Uh, I was actually able to see this car in person at the Rolls-Royce dealership near my house, so that inspired me immediately. Oh, so you saw it in real life. I You're love like, to do these guitars based on high-end cars and automobiles because these are my art guitars. I can express myself. Clients don't usually order something that gets this crazy or want to really maybe spend the money on it or even think of it. So this is like my art, my baby. So, dude, thank you so much. Hey, Dean, right? I'm here for you. Yeah, Dean. Dean, thank you so much. I'm John. Nice to meet nice you, man. So obviously, it's a little bit noisy out here right now because there's a lot of music going on, but I appreciate you guys watching. If there's anything that you want to see, please let me know. I'm trying to grow this channel, um, all music related content. So if there's anything you want to see, I'd greatly appreciate it if you check me out. Give me some tips, um, leave some comments below, and let me know if you like the video. Thank you so much.